Is your business struggling and is it causing you personal stress? If it is, this tip of the week is for you. Hi, it's Bob Nagan from WhizBang Training. And before we begin, if your business is on rails, if it's making plenty of money, uh, if you're deriving lots of lifestyle benefits from it, if you can go on long vacations and not worry about your business, don't worry about this video. But you may want to pass it along to someone you know who isn't experiencing that. And in this video, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about attitude, actions, and adjustments. And before we begin, I want to tell you that I went through what you're going through. I'm assuming now, since you're still watching, that your business is struggling and you are experiencing a lot of stress. Uh, in the 19 years that I owned and my brother and I owned the Mackinac Kite Company, my retail business, we almost went broke twice. And when I say went broke, I don't mean we were suffering a little cash flow issue. I mean our business, by all means, we should have closed the doors. And in each of those episodes, uh, I learned an awful lot. And that's what this tip is about. It's about sharing what I've learned to help you go through those times better. So first of all, let's talk about your attitude because attitude is key. When the phone is uh, ringing with the vendors and they want their money and people aren't coming into your store, it creates an awful lot of stress. I, I absolutely have the deepest empathy for where, for where you are. But uh, so the second time we almost went broke, we met a gentleman named Tom Williams. And, and, and I won't tell a long story, but this guy was an incredibly successful business person. Uh, when we met him, he had been retired twice and he owned 19 businesses when we met him. Anyway, a friend of ours said that this guy could help us you know, save our business. So we met with him and so brother Steve and I, we're, we ta we're telling him our story, you know, we're, we're, we're spilling our guts and I'll never forget it. Tom just kept sit sitting there and he just kept going, it's just business. And then Steve and I would say, but you don't understand. We owe this person money. The bank owes us money. You know, <laughs> just all this stress is just oozing from us. And he just kept raising his shoulders and saying, it's just business. And it was an incredibly important lesson, and I want to, you to think about that also. It's just business. You know, it's just part of your life. And once I was able to detach myself from what was going on and recognize it's just business, that's what's happening here. I have another part of my life there. It made it's so much easier. And I, I really believe that that's part of the, your, the maturing process that you have to go through as a business person. Your business is going to struggle. I don't care who you are or what you do. You're going to run into episodes, problematic episodes in your business. And it's just business. And so the more mature you become, the more experienced you become, the more you're able to compartmentalize what's happening. Understand this, this is critical, and I've told this to so many people, and it's had such an impact on so many people. You are not your business. Say that again, you are not your business. Your worth as a person is not tied to your success as a retailer. You are a husband, a wife, a father, a mother, a friend, a daughter, a son. All of those things preempt what you do as a business person. You have to understand that and know that, and I understand how hard it is, but you have to understand that, and you have to hold on to that. The more stressful things become, the more you have to cling to that and understand that and hold firm on that. So that's your attitude. You are not your business. You can be a successful person and an unsuccessful retailer. Second thing is actions. The first thing I want to say to you is that the only way to uh, respond to stress is with action. 
If you wait in your empty store for customers to come in, you will become more stressed by the minute. And I guarantee if you're waiting in that empty store, somehow Murphy's Law of Retail, the only person who's going to call is not going to be a customer with a big order. It's going to be a vendor going, where in the world is my money? So get out there and make something happen. You know, uh, one of the things that we teach is giving away gift certificates. You can get out of your store and walk up and down the street and introduce yourself to your fellow merchants, your fellow business people and, and say, here's a $5 or $10, whatever number. Here's a gift certificate to, to my store. Come on in. I'd love to have an opportunity to serve you. You know, you can read our book and it'll give you lots of ideas for how to build your business with almost no money. There are lots and lots of online resources, marketing ideas, but you have to do something. When you hustle, it all seems to be better and it all seems to work better. So you have to respond to stress with action. You can't sit on your uh, hands and expect things to get better. You can have a sale. There is nothing like having a sale. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not encouraging you to have a sale of, too often to raise money to have cash, but you can certainly have a sale. Bring some people in, get some momentum, get some cash flow. You can start to do sales training. One of the things that I know is that a lot of people have enough traffic to support their business. They're just not converting that traffic. So sales training is another action that you can take. And finally, if debt is part of your problem, which is probably the case, if you're having, you know, if you're all stressed out, you're carrying too much debt, I strongly recommend that you call performance Source. Now, Performance Source is a company that ethically uh, renegotiates your debt. Let me say that again. Ethically renegotiates your debt. We've got uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of clients who have used them, who rave about their integrity, who rave about their service, and most importantly, rave about their results. You know, quite often what a business needs is it needs to get out from under all of that debt that they're carrying to give them a chance to move forward. Now, I know some of you are feeling like I felt, that it's unethical to renegotiate debt that you've, or to, to renegotiate debt for goods that you've received and goods that you've agreed to pay a price for. I'd like to encourage you to go to our website and listen to an interview that I did with Jim Hurst. Jim is the, the founder of Performance Source, and you'll really get an understanding, a much better understanding for how this process works and why it's ethical and why it's honorable, and if you're suffering with too much debt, why you should do it. So go to our website, whizbangtraining.com. In the primary navigation, look under products and then look under recommended products and you'll find an interview that I did uh, with Jim Hurst, who he's since retired. Steve Newman now owns the company, but you'll, you'll see the process. Again, if you're carrying too much debt, it becomes almost impossible to get out from under it. You know, all you're doing is servicing debt. All you're doing is servicing debt. So if, you're, if you've got plenty of money and you're not paying your debts, that's unethical. If you're trying to save your business, uh, I strongly recommend that you talk to Performance Source. Again, that number is 800-883-5080. 800-883-5080. So that's a set of actions you can take. Go out, do something, make it happen. Attitude, actions, and finally, adjustments. You know, uh, Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If your business is stagnant, if it's flat, if it's not going anywhere, change what you're doing. You know, if you get performance source to, to renegotiate some of your debt away, but you don't change what you're doing, you're never going to get where you want to go. So first of all, let's talk about skills. A lot of you need skills. A lot of the people I talk to who are struggling clearly don't have the skills. Marketing is a key skill. Uh, you know, you don't have to 
spend a fortune to get those skills. You can buy our book, Marketing Your Retail Store in the Internet Age. Uh, you can go to, uh, online and look for other books. Just get so, marketing is the skill that connects you with the dollars. If you are not a savvy marketer, this is a great way to start. This is a great adjustment to make. Sales training is the second key skill for you to have. Creating a sales culture in your business and absolutely maximizing every opportunity with every customer is critical to your success. And finally, uh, inventory management. <laughs> Inventory management is so huge. When I talk to people, when I, when I do triage, I call it, when somebody comes to me and says, Bob, my business is in a world of hurt, what can I do? I usually look to these three things. You know, are you marketing your business? Are you marketing effectively? Are you driving traffic? Are you pulling people in? When they're in your store, are you selling them something? Have you created a sales culture? And finally, do you have too much inventory? I talk to people all the time who have way too much inventory or not enough to support sales. Either way, especially if you have way too much inventory or you're not managing your inventory correctly, I'm gonna recommend another company here. It's called Management One. And Management One helps you manage your inventory. It's such a critical piece of the puzzle. Uh, for years, my brother Steve and I would work our butts off all summer long. You know, I mean, most of our business was done in the summer season. And at the end of the season, we go, man, oh man, we worked hard, our sales are way up. Uh, uh, you know, lots of good things happen, but, but where's the cash? <laughs> Does that sound familiar to any of you? You're making money, you're paying profits on, uh, you're paying taxes on profits, but there's no cash left over. If that's the case, you really owe it to yourself to talk to management one. Uh, again, ethical, hardworking, uh, concerned, caring people. Uh, and they will help you manage your inventory. Call Evan at Management One, and the number is 1-888-921-6663. 888-921-6663. This is really kind of a structural problem. If you're carrying too much inventory, you don't know how to manage your inventory, and uh, you know, have that conversation. He's not gonna charge you anything for the conversation, and it may be one of the best things that you do for your business. The second adjustment to consider is to your, uh, to your assortment. You know, for years we were a kite store, but then we realized that we would never ever make it as a kite store and we became a toy store. You know, so our, you know, so the, you know, we added a whole nother dynamic to our business and that allowed us to thrive. You know, I just saw on our Facebook uh, page that Julie Hubbard, her business is up significantly and it's because she brought in a couple other lines. You know, so take a good look at what you're selling and why. And quite often, just adding a line or, or trading out a line, you know, pulling out a category and putting in a new category. Think about what you're selling. Just because it sold 10 years ago doesn't mean it's going to sell now. This is another area where Management One will help you. So look at what you're selling. That may be an adjustment that makes all the difference in the world to you. And finally, look at your niche. Now, this is the hardest part of this conversation for me. You know, when I started my business in 1981, I was 23 years old and you know, literally up in Mackinac City, Michigan. Here's Michigan, there's Mackinac City. And, uh, you know, here's this young guy, this big beard, crazy, fun-loving guy, flying kites. Everybody thought I was a drug dealer. You know, I mean, they didn't have any reference point for a guy like me. The, the, the st st statistical probability that the Mackinac Kite Company would still be here, you know, all these years later, that would be thriving all these decades later, was about nil, was about nil. But we made it. So I have a very, very difficult time telling anyone that they should close their stores. I have an incredibly difficult time. However, sometimes that's what you need to do. 
You know, if you opened a bridal store in a tiny little town in the middle of nowhere, there's probably not enough people around. There's not enough market for you to be successful. You know, sometimes it just isn't working. Sometimes there's just not the market to merchandise match that you need to be successful. And sometimes you just got to say, hey, this isn't working. I've given it my best shot. I can't do it anymore. I'm burned out. I'm worn out. I've had enough, you know, and then that's when you have to take that ego and let it go. You have to understand that you are not your business, that it's okay to not be a success in retail. You can still be a success in life. In fact, you can come back again and be a success in retail later. Take what you've learned that first time through and apply it on the backside. But I want you to sort of go through that. If you're struggling right now, I want you to think about your attitude. I really want you to think about how you're waking up and how you're approaching your day and what you're doing and how you're going to make a difference in your business today, now, this minute. I want you to think about the actions you're taking. I want you to become a marketer. Please become a marketer. Please become proactive about building your business and solving that problem and making things go. And I w want you to consider making adjustments. I want you to consider making adjustments. You can't stay the same if things aren't working. So, if you're struggling and it's creating stress for you, I want to tell you, I know where you've been. I know how you feel. And I know that you can make it, you can do it, and you can come out good on the other side. This is Bob Nagin, and I'm wishing you all the success in the world.